Hello friends, I'm day drinking in my kitchen, which can only mean one thing. It's time for another cooking video. So recently I bought an absolute treasure, the Nancy Drew cookbook. I bought it as I buy all my impulse purchases at 3 a.m. in a manic state. And you know what? I don't regret it. I've actually already made quite a few recipes from it. I've been having a few like Nancy Drew nights with my family where we cook a few things from here and uh, with very mixed results. I think you can probably tell from the cover that this book is from the 1970s. Yes, that is a ham with pineapple slices and maraschino cherries right front and center. The subtitle is Clues to Good Cooking by Carolyn Keene, but you know what, Carolyn? I'll be the judge of that. We'll see how good this cooking really is. So I was looking at quite a few recipes in this book, there's quite a few treasures imposter tea, the Drew's onion special, shadow ranch barbecued beans. But I have decided to make today a keen soup, spelled like Carolyn Keen. Let me just read you the ingredients. One cup of milk, four level tablespoons of peanut butter, a quarter teaspoon celery salt, or a quarter teaspoon cinnamon. That's it. <laughs> that, those are the ingredients of this soup. <laughs> if you're thinking that just sounds like a hot peanut butter milkshake, that's exactly what I'm thinking too. Nancy has a warning for us at the bottom. It's never a good sign when your recipe comes with a warning. Since this is a rich soup, she suggests only small quantities be served. I assume this is for one portion, like a cup of milk? That's not gonna make enough soup for like four people, surely. Although, small quantities. I'm really hoping I won't have leftovers is basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But maybe this will be the best soup I've ever eaten in my whole life. A keen soup is the only soup I'm going to be eating from now on, I assume. Anyway, I can have a sip of my drink and um, then let's get cooking. Okay, so the first step is beat together the milk and peanut butter until thoroughly mixed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right to it. Another particularly memorable <laughs> recipe that we made from this book, um, and this I think will give you an idea of what these recipes are like if you haven't got one already, but it's a, a recipe for um, a curried shrimp dish, like a specifically called curried shrimp something. Um, but curried is in the title. That's the important part you need to know. They call for half a teaspoon of curry powder for this whole dish and no other seasonings. That's how much curry we're putting in our curry shrimp dish. <laughs> half a teaspoon. Um, so yeah, it goes without saying that this is a very white person cookbook. Anyway, um, back to the keen soup. I haven't even, I haven't done anything yet. I'm using unsweetened, unsalted peanut butter, by the way, because that's what I grew up with because my dad's a diabetic, and I don't know if that will change the flavor profile of the soup or not. Nancy doesn't specify what kind of peanut butter you need to use, so I'm gonna use my own judgment. This is my favorite kind of peanut butter. Okay, there's the peanut butter. It's in the bowl. Oh my god, there's someone outside. They're gonna see me making my cursed peanut butter soup. <laughs> Making a nice, healthy, nutritious meal. Don't mind me. Here's my cup of milk. So right now I kind of have something that looks like if a dog with diarrhea had shit in my leftover cereal milk. Um, but we'll see how it looks when I blend it all together. It really does just look like cereal milk now. It's not incorporated. It's like little little kind of bits. The next step is to add either celery salt or cinnamon and seeing as I actually have no idea what celery salt is, I will be using cinnamon. It doesn't look like there's a lot in here. Hopefully there'll be enough. No, there's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just adding drama. I'm adding spice because this cookbook sure doesn't. They don't say beat that in. I already put my I already put my beater in the uh, in the dishwasher. 
Um, I guess I'll just mix that in with a fork. I could be really pedantic here and be like, oh, there's we doesn't say to beat it in, so I'll just leave it. But I'm gonna try to salvage this as much as I can, you know? I don't want to torture myself that much. Okay, our next step is to place in saucepan over low heat, stirring and watching constantly. Then it says as it starts to boil, but I was always told a watched pot never boils. So I don't know how this is gonna work out. Okay, stirring. Stirring and washing constantly. As it starts to boil, remove from heat and pour to preheated cups. Cups? Are they at, are they seriously drinking this soup? I guess you do drink soup. And makes four cups? This is supposed to be four fucking servings of soup. Oh, I didn't read the recipe clearly enough. Is this supposed to feed four people? What kind of deranged soup is this? Fucking unhinged recipe. I guess I got a cup ready. I'm not gonna fucking heat my cup. That's just too much work. This is probably sacrilege, but I'm gonna have it out of my snuggie mug. Let's see the resemblance. Oh god, I'm not. I'm not staring and watching constantly. I'm already breaking the rules of the recipe. I'm a recipe criminal. <laughs> Arrest me, cooking police. <laughs> Slap me in irons. While we're waiting, I'll read the introduction to the cookbook. And um, how can you become a really good cook? It's no mystery, Nancy Drew reveals. You must do what fine cooks have always done. Add your own special touch. How do you do this? Let Nancy show you how. Let Nancy how to add, show you how to add your own special touch. Okay. <laughs> Who would be more intrigued to be an adventurer in cooking than a girl who loves to solve mysteries? Does that make sense as a sentence? In this book, she gives you over a hundred easy recipes, and for some of them, she has included her cooking secret. Oh my gosh. I think in this recipe, the cooking secret was Nancy's warning, do not eat too much of this soup or you will suffer the consequences. Goodness, my arm is getting tired. This is a workout. Oh my god. Ah. Of course, Nancy's friends have helped with her cookbook and Hannah Gruen has lent advice. Not enough advice, I would say. Just remember Nancy's two most important rules. Follow the recipe carefully and add that little secret touch of hers. Or think of a mystery ingredient of your own. That's... that's hypocritical. It's like, follow the recipe, but then add a mystery ingredient of your own. That's not following the recipe. That's contradictory advice. Then we get a page of, um, I had to switch arms, by the way, of cooking tips while we continue to wait for my fucking soup to boil. I knew it! I knew a watch pot never boils. Didn't I say that? To clue you in, number one, unless you are an expert, follow the recipes exactly. I already haven't done that. I haven't heated my cup! <laughs> Who do I think I am? An expert? Nancy's scoffing at me. Put on an apron and wash your hands before starting to work. I already failed the <laughs> no steps. I mean, I did wash my hands. Don't, don't get me wrong, I did wash my hands. But do you, do you see an apron? Yeah, that's where I went wrong. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. It said low heat. But you could be a little higher. Still not boiled. Come on! Come on! Still here. How do you preheat a cup? I I'm at a stage where I'm like, I'm so bored. I'm I'm tempted to actually preheat my cup. I'm gonna Google this. Oh! Fill it with boiling water, let it sit for a few minutes, dump the water, and fill her up. Good news! My water boiled before my soup, so at least my cup is preheating. Just like the recipe said, right? I'm turning this fucking thing right up. I don't care. Maybe 
stoves were different in the 1970s. Maybe like a 1970s low heat would be like medium heat in the modern day. It's a fucking cup of milk. How long will that take to boil? I don't understand. Too impatient as a person, I think. Maybe my problem is I'm not stirring it and watching it enough. I'm supposed to constantly do that, and I did not. I don't know what beverage they're drinking in this picture. Like, is that eggnog? Maybe that's the peanut butter soup. <gasps> Maybe that's keen soup. That's their preheated cups of keen soup. It is a very similar color to what my soup looks like right now. I think I've been waiting for this goddamn soup to boil for about half an hour now. Oh, there's some wisps of steam starting to form. <gasps> oh my god, I think it, I think it's happening. I think it's it's beginning to boil. <gasps> Finally! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so it starts. Wait, it starts to boil. Yeah, it's removed from heat and pour into preheated cups. Oh my god, let me get the hot water out of my cup. I think I'm gonna do this over the sink. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nancy said. That it makes four cups. It, like, all that soup filled one cup perfectly. I mean, I guess she said small quantities. Um. <laughs> How small? <laughs> like, if your recipe can only be stomached in quarter of a cup quantities at a time, is it really a good recipe? Well, um, oh wait, no, I missed a step. It says top with a teaspoon whipped cream. I don't have a teaspoon whipped cream. It also has sprinkle with paprika. Great, you know, I'm, can't be any worse than it already is, right? Okay, well, um, here goes nothing. Cheers. What's hot? too. You know when you make paper mache, if you consumed paper mache paste, it's basically, basically what this is like. So you don't have to try this for yourself. Just, you know, take my word for it. Imagine that. Is this really what people ate in the 70s? I wonder how different it would be if I'd added celery salt instead of cinnamon. I can't really taste the cinnamon, actually. I'm a little disappointed. I feel like that would have added something, but, mm. Oh, God. <laughs> There's a skin on top. It's so horrible. <laughs> it's so horrible. 
Nancy, why did you do this to me? I want to know who's responsible for this cookbook. Where is Carolyn Keene? Where is the person behind Carolyn Keene who wrote this cookbook who decided to include Keene soup in their recipe book? You couldn't just put in like a normal tomato soup. You had to put in fucking peanut butter soup. What's wrong with you? Um, yeah, well, anyway, um, I made <laughs> Keen soup from the Nancy Drew cookbook. It was not good. I hope you enjoyed this video more than I enjoyed my soup. If you did, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'll definitely be making more cooking videos in the future. I do enjoy them. Um, I don't know if I'll be making any more from this cookbook. We'll see.